free space optical communication is an optical communication technology that uses light propagating in free space to wirelessly transmit data for telecommunications or computer networking. Free space means air, outer space, vacuum, or something similar. This contrasts with using solids such as optical fiber cable or an optical transmission line. The technology is useful where the physical connections are impractical due to high costs or other considerations. History Optical communications, in various forms, have been used for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks used a coded alphabetic system of signaling with torches developed by Cleoxenus, Democritus, and Polybius. In the modern era, semaphores and wireless solar telegraphs called heliographs were developed using coded signals to communicate with their recipients. In 1880 Alexander Graham Bell and his assistant Charles Sumner Tainter created the Photophone, at Bell's newly established Volta Laboratory in Washington, D.C. Bell considered it his most important invention. The device allowed for the transmission of sound on a beam of light. On June 3, 1880, Bell conducted the world's first wireless telephone transmission between two buildings, some 213 meters apart. Its first practical use came in military communication systems many decades later, first for optical telegraphy. German colonial troops used heliograph telegraphy transmitters during the 1904-05 Harry Regenocide in German Southwest Africa as did British, French, US or Ottoman signals. During the trench warfare of World War I when wire communications were often cut, German signals used three types of optical Morse transmitters called blink recurrency T, the intermediate type for distances of up to 4 km at daylight and of up to 8 km at night, using red filters for undetected communications. Optical telephone communications were tested at the end of the war, but not introduced at troop level. In addition, special blink recurrency TS were used for communication with airplanes, balloons, and tanks with varying success. A major technological step was to replace the Morse code by modulating optical waves in speech transmission. Carl Zeiss Gina developed the light spread recurrency T-80-80 that the German Army used in their World War II anti-aircraft defense units, or in bunkers at the Atlantic Wall. The invention of lasers in the 1960s revolutionized free space optics. Military organizations were particularly interested and boosted their development. However the technology lost market momentum when the installation of optical fiber networks for civilian uses was at its peak. Many simple and inexpensive consumer remote controls use low-speed communication using infrared light. This is known as consumer IR technologies. A recently declassified 1987 Pentagon report reveals free space lasers have been mounted on Israeli F-15 fighter jets for the purposes of surveillance, missile tracking, and targeted weaponry. Usage and Technologies Free space point-to-point -point optical links can be implemented using infrared laser light, although low data rate communication over short distances is possible using LEDs. Infrared data association technology is a very simple form of free space optical communications. On the communications side the FSO technology is considered as a part of the optical wireless communications applications. Free space optics can be used for communications between spacecraft, but this has not been put into practice. Equals current market demands equals, the demand for a high speed and long range FSO system is apparent in the marketplace. In 2008, MRV Communications introduced a free space optics based system with a data rate of 10 gigabytes per second initially claiming a distance of 2 kilometers at high availability. This equipment is no longer available. Before end of life, the product's useful distance was changed down to 350 m. In 2013, the company Mostcom started to serially produce a new wireless communication system that also had a data rate of 10 gigabytes per second as well as an improved range of up to 2.5 kilometers, but to get to 99.99% .99 uptime the designers used an RF hybrid solution, meaning the data rate drops to extremely low levels during atmospheric disturbances. Lightpoint offers many similar hybrid solutions to Mostcom's offering equals useful distances equals 
the reliability of FSO units has always been a problem for commercial telecommunications. Consistently, studies find too many dropped packets and signal errors over small ranges. This is from both independent studies, such as in the Czech Republic, as well as formal internal nationwide studies, such as one conducted by MRVFSO staff. Military-based studies consistently produce longer estimates for reliability, projecting the maximum range for terrestrial links is of the order of 2 to 3 kilometers. All studies agree the stability and quality of the link is highly dependent on atmospheric factors such as rain, fog, dust and heat. Equals extending the useful distance equals. The main reason terrestrial communications have been limited to non-commercial telecommunications functions is fog. Fog consistently keeps FSO laser links over 500 meters from achieving a year-round bit error rate of 99.999%. Several entities are continually attempting to overcome these key disadvantages to FSO communications and field a system with a better quality of service. DARPA has sponsored over $130 million USD in research towards this effort, with the OSCA and OSCLE programs. Other non-government groups are fielding tests to evaluate different technologies that some claim have the ability to address key FSO adoption challenges. As of October 2014, none have fielded a working system that addresses the most common atmospheric events. FSO research from 1998 to 2006 in the private sector totaled $407.1 million, divided primarily among four startup companies. All four failed to deliver products that would meet telecommunications quality and distance standards. Terabeam received approximately $226 million in funding. AT&T and Lucent backed this attempt. The work ultimately failed, and the company reorganized in 2004. Air Fiber received $96.1 million in funding, and never solved the weather issue. They sold out to MRV Communications in 2003 and MRV sold their FSO units until 2012 when the end of life was abruptly announced for the Tiriscope series. Lightpoint Communications received $76 million in startup funds, and eventually reorganized to sell hybrid FSO or F units to overcome the weather-based challenges. The Maxima Corporation published its operating theory in science, and received $9 million in funding before permanently shutting down. No known spin-off or purchase followed this effort. One private company published a paper on November 20, 2014, claiming they had achieved commercial reliability in extreme fog. There is no indication this product is currently commercially available. Equals extraterrestrial equals, the massive advantages of laser communication in space of multiple space agencies racing to develop a stable space communication platform with many significant demonstrations and achievements. To date, no laser communication system is in use in space. See Laser Communication in Space, Demonstrations in Space, the first gigabit laser-based communication was achieved by the European Space Agency and called the European Data Relay System on November 28, 2014. 4. The initial images have just been demonstrated, and a working system is expected to be in place in the 2015 to 2016 timeframe. NASA's Opals announced a breakthrough in space to ground communication December 9, 2014, uploading 175 megabytes in 3.5 seconds. Their system is also able to reacquire tracking after the signal was lost due to cloud cover. 5. In January 2013, NASA used lasers to beam an image of the Mona Lisa to the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter roughly 390,000 kilometers away. To compensate for atmospheric interference, an error correction code algorithm similar to that used in CDs was implemented. 6. The distance records for optical communications involve detection and emission of laser light by space probes. A two-way distance record for communication was set by the Mercury Laser Altimeter Instrument aboard the Messenger spacecraft. This diode-pumped infrared neodymium laser, designed as a laser altimeter for a Mercury orbit mission, was able to communicate across a distance of 24 million km, as the craft neared Earth on a flyby in May, 2005. 
The previous record had been set with a one-way detection of laser light from Earth, by the Galileo probe, as two ground-based lasers were seen from 6 million km by the outbound probe, in 1992. 7. Quote from Laser Communication in Space Demonstrations LEDs In 2004, a visible light communication consortium was formed in Japan. This was based on work from researchers that used a white LED-based space lighting system for indoor local area network communications. These systems present advantages over traditional UHF RF-based systems from improved isolation between systems, the size and cost of receivers transmitters, RF licensing laws and by combining space lighting and communication into the same system. In January 2009 a task force for visible light communication was formed by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Working Group for Wireless Personal Area Network Standards known as IEEE 802.15.7. A trial was announced in 2010 in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Amateur radio operators have achieved significantly farther distances using incoherent sources of light from high-intensity LEDs. One reported 173 miles in 2007. However, physical limitations of the equipment used limited bandwidths to about 4 kHz. The high sensitivities required of the detector to cover such distances made the internal capacitance of the photodiode used a dominant factor in the high impedance amplifier which followed it, thus naturally forming a low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency in the 4 kHz range. From the other side use of lasers radiation source allows to reach very high data rates which are comparable to fiber communications. Projected data rates and future data rate claims vary. A low-cost white LED which could be used for space lighting can typically be modulated up to 20 MHz. Data rates of over 100 MHz can be easily achieved using efficient modulation schemes and Siemens claimed to have achieved over 500 MHz in 2010. Research published in 2009 used a similar system for traffic control of automated vehicles with LED traffic lights. In September 2013, Pure Li-Fi, the Edinburgh startup working on Li-Fi, also demonstrated high-speed point-to-point connectivity using any off-the-shelf LED light bulb. In previous work, high-bandwidth specialist LEDs have been used to achieve the high data rates. The new system, the Li-First, maximizes the available optical bandwidth for any LED device, thereby reducing the cost and improving the performance of deploying indoor FSO systems. Engineering Details Typically, best use scenarios for this technology are LAN to LAN connections on campuses at fast Ethernet or gigabit Ethernet speeds, LAN to LAN connections in a city, a metropolitan area network, to cross a public road or other barriers which the sender and receiver do not own, speedy service delivery of high bandwidth access to optical fiber networks, converged voice data connection, temporary network installation, re-establish high-speed connection quickly, as an alternative or upgrade add-on to existing wireless technologies, especially powerful in combination with auto-aiming systems, this way you could power moving cars or you can Power your laptop while you move or use auto-aiming nodes to create a network with other nodes. As a safety add-on for important fiber connections, for communications between spacecraft, including elements of a satellite constellation, for inter- and intra-chip communication. The light beam can be very narrow, which makes FSO hard to intercept, improving security. In any case, it is comparatively easy to encrypt any data traveling across the FSO connection for additional security. FSO provides vastly improved electromagnetic interference behavior compared to using microwaves. Equals technical advantages equals ease of deployment can be used to power devices, license free long range operation, high bit rates, low bit error rates, immunity to electromagnetic interference, full duplex operation protocol transparency, increased security when working with narrow beam, s, no fresnel zone necessary. Equals range limiting factors equals, for terrestrial applications, the principal limiting factors are, fog, beam dispersion, atmospheric absorption, rain, snow, terrestrial scintillation, interference from background light sources, shadowing, 
pointing stability in wind, pollution slash smog, these factors cause an attenuated receiver signal and lead to higher bit error ratio. To overcome these issues, vendors found some solutions, like multi-beam or multi-path architectures, which use more than one sender and more than one receiver. Some state-of-the-art devices also have larger fade margin. To keep an eye safe environment, good FSO systems have a limited laser power density and support laser classes 1 or 1M atmospheric and fog attenuation, which are exponential in nature, limit practical range of FSO devices to several kilometers. See also, laser communication in space, optical wireless communications, applications of atomic line filters in laser tracking and communication, extremely high frequency, IRDAR, RONJA, laser safety, list of laser articles, my scattering, modulating retro reflector, enslit interferometer, semaphore line, optical window, photophone, radio window, Rayleigh scattering, smoke signal, terabeam, visible light communication, Leafy. References Further reading, Christos Contergiagakis. Millimeter through visible frequency waves through aerosols particle modeling, reflectivity and attenuation. Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. Master's thesis, Heinz Willebrand and Bakshish Human. Free Space Optics, Enabling Optical Connectivity in Today's Networks. SAMS. Moll, Florian. Free Space Laser System for Secure Air to Ground Quantum Communications. SPIE Newsroom. David G. Aviv. Laser Space Communications. Artec House ISBN 1 59693 028 4. External links Free Space Optics on COST 297 for HAPs, Explanation of Fresnel Zones in Microwave and Optical Links. Video showing light stretch to recurrency T80 in use on YouTube, International Space Station to Beam Video Viaduct Laser Back to Earth, March 2014 NASA's Optical Payload for Laser Come Science Demonstration Mission to the ISS.